Welcome back to Stab the Dragon Productions for episode number 90. That's a nine or zero. Whiskey review 54. Although this is more than a whiskey review, I'm introducing the Texas Whiskey Tournament here. So we're going to go over the rules and structure. This will be a, perhaps a bit tedious, but it must be done. We will be looking at a whiskey tonight, though. Treaty Oak Day Drinker Bourbon. Treaty Oak Day Drinker Bourbon. This is a Texas made whiskey. In other words, grain to glass, Texas. Coming in at 80 proof. This is made from uh, the Treaty Oak uh, Distillery in Dripping Springs, Texas. Aged for one year. Coming in at 80 proof. The Day Drinker Bourbon. Has 57% corn, 32% wheat, 11% barley. Char level three. And I really appreciate the uh, Dripping Springs Distillery website giving us all that information up front and clear, discernible. I mean, just honest. Imagine that. Aged for one year in the Texas heat. And that's why it's a. Uh, you know, this is maybe a little bit uh, lighter than in most Texas whiskeys, although Tavacaro is aged for one year, and it comes in really dark. So this is a uh, you know, fairly light whiskey there. It's, that's about a two. Total wine, $24.99. Specs, $26.28. And goody goody, $28.99. I think I got this one at uh, Goody Goody sometime last year. So, uh, you know, I've had it on the shelf. I just now opened it today. So, sampling this this whiskey, the uh, the website says that it smells like sugar cookie sugar cookies and maple syrup. Well, me and my nose smell nothing. Very faint something or other but my nose just doesn't work. The website says it tastes like kettle corn, wheat, cinnamon, nutmeg. I get just a little bit of the kettle corn. Maybe a touch of touch of cinnamon, but uh, not a whole lot going on there, really, to tell you the truth. Nothing bad, okay? But there's also just not a whole lot going on there. I'm going to put this in the category of, say, uh, benchmark, benchmark number eight, their 80 proof benchmark. But the benchmark probably beats this in taste and flavor. But again, this is a neck pour. I, I mean, I just opened this, and I use and I I hate giving a review after just opening something, because the neck pour is, for, for me, it's problematic. I know some of you say it's not, but man. So at any rate, pleasant, generally pleasant, but uh, just a, not a whole lot going on there. But it is a day drinker, so there you go. I would rec I mean, I'd try it. I don't know if I'll buy it again, you know, for 26 to 28 dollars though. That's not a bad price. So does it taste like Texas? Not really. I'm not sure about that. I mean, aged for a year, but I'm not getting I'm not getting the Texas funk at all. Hmm. Yeah, no Texas funk. So not sure. It's decent. I'd try it, but I probably won't get it again. There you go. So now let's move on to the Texas Whiskey Tournament. I've been talking about this for about the last year. This is something I've wanted to do. I've been taste testing all these Texas whiskeys, and, and frankly, <clears throat> I'm running out of time. I've still got several uh, whiskeys that I haven't given a review of, like this Treaty Oak Day Drinker. So I'm just going to give a quick review. 
I'm going to move on to the Texas Whiskey Tournament. And as I come across new whiskeys that I haven't reviewed, I'll do what I did tonight and just, you know, give you a little hint of a review. But let's talk about the tournament. I've watched a lot of other whiskey channels do something similar to this, for sure. I mean, this is a common thing in the whiskey world <clears throat> where they they go through, like Chad and Sarah over at uh, It's Bourbon Night. They're pros. I mean, th th their channel is just superior. They're, they're awesome. Uh, they're, they're, they're the masters of this. But what they do is they call it a flight fight, I believe. And so they may line up uh, six or even eight whiskeys. And, and test them and, and see uh, which ones they like the best. And sometimes they try to name the whiskeys too, you know. So uh, there, there's that. And then I, I like, uh, oh, the guys at uh, Scotch Test Dummies. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll kind of do that. But really my favorite show, the show I watch the most is Thrifty Whiskey with Josh, Eric, and Keith. And their, their show's my favorite. They do this sort of thing very well. Normally they focus on whis one whiskey, but uh, often they'll do three or four together and, and try to figure out uh, which they like the best and if they can identify what they are. And it re really, Thrifty Whiskey, they do a fantastic job. So, you know, if, you, if you've never watched them, I, I would look those guys up. So what I intend to do here is is a little bit different from what everybody else has done. Uh, and I'm sure there's somebody out there who does this, but I intend a, a double elimination tournament where I do head-to-head -head competition of Texas whiskeys by category or type of whiskey so that I can see if I can find my favorite Texas whiskeys and what my least favorites are. Now, there's different categories here, and I've come up with a list of all the categories here. So we're going to do, we're going to start off with rye whiskeys. And I presently own 13 different rye whiskeys in the Texas category. And then we'll go to, and, and so, I, you know, I need an even number. Uh, so I'm probably going to find one more rye. Then the next category is single malts. I only have six uh, Texas single malts. So, you know, who knows? I, I might uh, look, look for a couple more single malts. Bourbons, though, I've got 28. So I think I've got uh, enough bourbons to, you know, carry this competition on. Corn whiskeys. I only have four corn whiskeys. Uh, you would think there would be more corn whiskeys. I, I'm going to have to look hard and see if I can find a couple more corn whiskeys in Texas. I know that Yellow Rose makes a, uh, a corn bourbon, and that would kick, the, you know, that, that might pass for corn whiskey. You know, bourbon's different, but it's 100% corn, so, you know, maybe I'll do that. But I've got to find a couple more corn whiskeys. American whiskeys or blends. Now, that's combining a couple of things, uh, and I've only got five of those. So I might need to try to find one more blended whiskey or American whiskey. Smoked whiskeys. I only have three, and that's a problem. I need to find at least one more smoked whiskey. Then I've got a category that I'm calling wannabe, ought to have been Texas whiskeys. These are whiskeys that have a relationship to Texas, but aren't necessarily really Texas whiskeys. So uh, there I've got uh, a whopping nine of those on my list. And I'm getting a little creative with those. Uh, so I'll explain that category when we actually get there late in the year. And the final category, liqueurs. And I've only got three. And, and again, some of those are not really Texas, but there's a relationship to Texas perhaps. You know, some of that I'm getting creative with. but. Liqueurs are, generally speaking, good for uh, cocktails. So we, we may experiment with some cocktails there when we do that competition. So those are the, the categories uh, of whiskey that we're going to look at over the course of the next year to year and a half. I want to be optimistic and say I can get this done in a year and a half. Uh, and it may take longer. It may take, be, be a longer process. 
because of my rules. What am I going to be doing with this? First of all, each event will be a blind tasting of only two to three whiskeys, no, no more, probably just two. There's not going to be any flight fights of six to eight whiskeys like Chad and Sarah do. No, if there's an odd number of whiskeys in a category, if I can't pull it up to, to an even number by searching and buying, well, the last whiskey then will, will start its own competition with uh, one of the losers of the first round. If the odd whiskey wins, then it will complete compete with the loser of the second round, etc. So uh, I, I don't think I'm going to give any favored whiskeys a bye week. It's, it's going to have to fight through all the levels, just like all the others. Some of the categories I think will be subdivided, sort of. Uh, in other words, I'm going to arrange the categories by proof. That is, I'll start the competition with the lower proof whiskeys of that category. Let's take rise. So I'll, I'll work through the lower proof rise first, and then I'll end with the higher proof categories. And then uh, the, the winners, you know, take on the winners. So the, that should end. The end result should be the winner of the low proof whiskeys will be pitted against uh, the winner of the high proof. And then because it's a double elimination tournament, the, the losers may come in and, and compete as well. So <clears throat> the problem is, is I've got some whiskeys that are going to be in two or even three different categories. Let's take single malts. You know, I don't have that many single malts. And some of them are smoky. And so I've included a smoky category. So the smoky single malts will compete in the single malt category, but then they'll also compete in the smoky category because in the smoky category, I've got some corn whiskeys. So a smoked single malt versus a smoked corn whiskey. See how that works. So you, you, you see the corn whiskeys then will also get uh, they'll compete in the corn whiskey category, but if there's a smoky corn whiskey, then it will compete in the smoky category. Then there's the category of the ought to be, want to be Texas whiskeys, uh, almost Texas whiskeys. Uh, these are whiskeys that are related to Texas in some manner. Here's an example. Wild Turkey Long Branch. Obviously, Wild Turkey is a Kentucky bourbon, but what is Long Branch? It's Matthew McConaughey's uh, name is attached to that, and he's a Texan. You know, he's from Uvalde, Texas, which is where my ancestral homeland is. So they use mesquite smoke somewhat in, in Long Branch. Mesquite grows in Texas. So, you know, there's a couple of things about Wild Turkey Long Branch that are related to Texas. So that's a wannabe ought to be uh, Texas whiskey. And, I, and I've got a few of things like that. So <clears throat> there's also uh, finished whiskeys. Okay, so if I've got a Okaneden bourbon and rar, right? Well, that's a bourbon. Okay, so it needs to compete in the bourbon category, but it's also a finished whiskey, right? So it's going to compete in the finished whiskey category, but it's also an ought to be, want to be whiskey, right? Because Okaneden uses MGP bourbon and then they just do the uh the the thing here in texas where they put the spire in the bottle and then they finish it that way here in texas so it's a texas company it's finished and bottled in texas but it's a mgp bourbon and it's a finish so you see there's three different categories there that oak and eden can compete in now, in the event that a whiskey category has no clear winner, and that's a real possibility, say it's a draw, then the winners will be decided by price and availability. Now, see, this is part of the reason why I'm doing this tournament. As I've been reviewing these Texas whiskeys, what I've found is several times I've said, oh, man, this is going to be the winner. This is great, and uh, this is an A-plus whiskey. And I've got several of those. And can I even tell the difference between them? I don't know. So when we do this, it's going to be blind. My wife is going to help set this up for me. Now, I'll know, generally speaking, what two whiskeys we're tasting that night. But in the glass, I won't know which is which. So I'm going to see if some of these winners, I may not be able to discern a winner. 
So I've got to have some kind of a tiebreaker, right? Well, that's going to be price and availability. So there you go. So part of the fun uh, in, in doing this is, is also going to be me trying to guess which whiskey is which. Can I tell between these two? I mean, I'm going to know that I've got these two whiskeys I'm testing tonight, but I don't know in the glass which one is which. Will I be able to figure that out? I don't know. Okay, so when each category then has a winner and a loser, at the end of the tournament, I might bring an outside challenger in, say a favorite Kentucky bourbon or a Tennessee whiskey or a rye, and see, can Texas whiskeys hold up to a favorite Tennessee whiskey? Hmm? I mean, you know, if I put a George Dickel uh, bottled and bond in, in, in there, one of my favorites, or Jack Daniels Single Barrel, one of my favorites, well, will that be able to beat it, my favorite Texas whiskey? I don't know. So that'll come at the end of the process. Now, some disclaimers. The whiskey bottles have a wide variety of levels or quantities right now because I've been drinking them for the last couple of years, right? A few years, maybe. Some have been open for probably three years or maybe even more. And then some are just recently opened, like the Treaty Oak here. I just opened it today. So the competition may not be 100% scientifically fair. That's a disclaimer. Also, tastes are very subjective and even change over time. This uh, neck pour that I've got tonight was not very impressive. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, but neither is it very impressive. In fact, on that taste, I'm getting hints of a Canadian whiskey, maybe. Hmm. Which I like Canadian whiskey, sure, okay. But that's what that tasted like. Maple. Yeah, a little bit of maple cinnamon. Hmm. So in other words, a few months down the line, this whiskey may improve. That that's what I have found sometimes is that the neck pour is not impressive, but as I go down the bottle. So in other words, the competition may not be totally fair because I'm not using new bottles to start off the competition. So I'll, you know, and again, I'm, I'm going to know which of the two, which two whiskeys we're competing with that evening. The individual glasses will be unknown to me, but if I know my whiskey, sometimes visually I can look at one and say, oh, I know which one that is. You know, and my wife was arguing with me about that. She said, no, 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 you ought to have a blindfold on. You, if you can look at it and see, you might be able to guess it. And it's like, well, yeah, that's that's possible, but I'm not going to do the blindfold thing. So <clears throat> now, am I going to give advantages to my favorite whiskeys? I, I don't think so, although when I arrange the brackets, Sometimes I did, or and this is typical in any competition, you put the number one seed against the number four seed, just like the college football tournament that's going on right now. So you, you may do do that with whiskeys as well. So the system's not foolproof. I'm, I'm going to be able to anticipate some flavors. I'm going to be able to see the difference in the whiskeys, and you know that may help me. Uh, now, one possible snag is if on one particular week my wife is not available to help me set the glasses up for a competition, I, I may, you know, have to do it by myself, and that could, you know, give an advantage to some something. I, I don't know. Uh, so I've only done one head-to-head -head competition in my whiskey channel so far, and that was Bushmills. Uh, about a month or so ago, I did a Bushmills original versus a... Uh, I think it was Red Bush. And uh, there I knew which was which. And I was deliberately competing one against the other. And I found that to be actually very helpful. Uh, and, and that actually got a lot of views uh, for, for my channel. Okay. So, you know, that, that was back in December 3rd. Or so it was about a month ago. Some of the whiskeys entered into this tournament. Again, I've not reviewed previously. So... Uh, I may need to be sure to open those and, and, and drink one beforehand so I don't get a neck pour. Now, I don't hide the fact that I'm a 
fan of Texas whiskey, and I openly advocate for Texas whiskeys uh, to, to be declared as a separate category of whiskey, much like Tennessee whiskey is. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to shoot for a week, weekly episode, but I can't guarantee uh, that with uh, my work, church, and family obligations around. So um, if anybody has any comments or questions, be, be sure to you know, put that in the comment section. Here is an example of what I'm going to start with. Uh, this is the Texas Rye Whiskey Competition. So I'm going to hold this up here, and maybe you can see that. Uh, maybe not. Let's, we're trying to get that straight there. So there's the first page, and then... Here's the second page of the tournament. Now, if I was a real pro, I'd figure out a way to, you know, put this onto the video other than holding up a piece of paper. But so when we uh, when we start off, I'm going to start off with uh, Acre Texas Rye versus Blackland Rye. Acre Rye comes in at 80 proof, and Blackland at 83 proof. So that'll be the first one, and I might be able to get that going this next week. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm, this is Stab the Dragon out here. 